Oh, I, I swear this team is going to be the death of me. But at least at the rate things are going, I'm going to enjoy it on the way out. What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to Kraken r, r where the Seattle Kraken win their second playoff overtime game, defeating the Dallas Stars 5-4. to four. And not only remaining undefeated in overtime playoff games, but remaining undefeated in very important game ones of playoff series, as they win on the road in Dallas to take game one of round two, just like they did in Colorado of round one. Although that one they won in regulation, but either way, they lead the series one to nothing. And honestly, I don't know what else I expected. After round one, the Kraken win that in seven games, with all seven of them being pretty close games, two goal games every time. I mean, yes, the Avalanche did win four to one in game six, but the fourth was an empty netter, so still a pretty close game right up until the end. And of course, game one of round two, two days after game seven is no different as it goes the distance to overtime. And considering how especially the first period went, we better just jump right into it to not waste any more time. Though we, I guess we'll give a quick second to the lineups coming into this first game. As the Kraken, there's no changes, still no Jared McCann for it sounds like game one and two at least of this series as he didn't travel with the team. And Haxtell, when asked if he would make an appearance at all in round two, all he said was, I can't answer that at this time, which isn't a no, but also doesn't sound particularly hopeful. Meanwhile, for the Stars, they do end up getting their guy back from a concussion that went out in game one of that series. Again, we're assuming that's what McCann has. Technically, they haven't disclosed what his injury is, but I think a concussion is fairly safe to assume. Either way, just like the Avalanche got McCarr back in time for game one of round one, the Stars get Pavelski back just in time for game one of round two. And boy, oh boy, did he end up making a difference. And unfortunately, he starts making that difference almost right away, as within the first few minutes, the Stars are the ones that get on the board first, and obviously it's Pavelski who does it, as he's left pretty much all alone on the left side of the defensive end, as Larson gets caught drifting a little bit too far towards the middle of the ice, where Dunn has... I think it was Domi along the far wall. Either way, the pass gets all the way to the other side, where then Pavelski has plenty of time to pick his spot, take his shot, and beat Grubauer to give the Stars the one to nothing lead in for the Kraken. They give up the first goal of a playoff game for the first time in franchise history after having scored first in all seven games of round one. Which, by the way, since I forgot to mention this in the r, &R for game seven, the Kraken, by doing that, scoring first in all seven games of that series against the Avalanche, became just the second team in NHL history to do that in a playoff series. However, while that sounds like a good thing, the other team to do it was the 2004 Toronto Maple Leafs. And as we all know, they didn't win another series after that for 19 years. So hopefully that's not a bad omen, but yeah. Obviously, only time will tell as far as that's concerned. Unfortunately for the Kraken, that isn't a streak that they can continue into round two, as, again, the Stars now have the one to nothing lead. And that seems particularly important in a series that features two of the best goaltenders by save percentage from round one. So you'd have to think with how these two teams played defensively and how good these two goaltenders were in the first round, this is a series that probably will not feature a ton of goal scoring. There's going to be a lot of one to two games and maybe two to three games with possibly the one game that's say four to three and just seems ridiculously high scoring relative to the others, which makes it even more nerve wracking when as we get towards the middle of the period with the score still one to nothing, the stars end up getting the first power play of the game and series with a chance to take the two to nothing lead halfway through the first. Fortunately though, the cracking penalty kill once again comes up big against another one of the regular season's best power play units and one of the best power plays of the first round on top of that in the Stars, really not even allowing them to get set up and get shots off on goal. In fact, the first scoring chance of this power play actually comes in favor of the Kraken as Tanev gets set loose on kind of a partial breakaway shorthanded, but he really isn't able to get much of a dangerous shot off and Ottinger does blocker that one to the side. The Stars end up getting, I think, one shot on goal on this power play, but the Kraken are able to kill it off. Then, this is where things start getting out of hand and out of hand in a hurry. As the Kraken, once again, after having 
pretty impressively killed off that first power play for the Stars, get right back down to the other end of the ice, and still kind of between a change with the forward group being Everly, Geeky, and Schwartz. But even though this isn't a group of three that has played a ton together out on the ice at the same time, they still managed to make magic happen here for the Kraken out in front of the Dallas net as Everly bumps it up from the side of the net up to Geeky, who drags it out in front of the net. And it looked like he was going to try and take a shot trying to get it around Ottinger, but instead he just passes it right back to where he came from, where Schwartz has come up into the play and Schwartz makes one move and puts it right through the five hole of Ottinger and into the back of the net to tie the game at one. So Schwartz gets his third of the playoffs and both he and Geeky continue to build off of that strong performance that they and that line with Wemberg usually as the third had in that first series against the Avalanche. But less than a minute later, the Stars take that lead right back and of course, once again, it's Joe Pavelski doing the more normal Joe Pavelski thing as he just parks himself right in the middle of the slot. And although Borgen is doing a pretty good job of tying him up here, honestly doing just about everything short of straight up hooking Pavelski in the slot, he's still able to fight through it and get in position for a tip right in the slot off of a shot that comes from right down the middle up by the blue line. Just like we talked about in that preview video, the stars like to make things happen right down the middle of the ice and tip things in from out in front. And that's just what happens here. Pavelski doing what he does best. And again, from a Kraken perspective, all you can really do is tip your cap to him for a great play here in the slot to tip it perfectly into the top corner pass Grubauer, who really never has a chance on the deflected goal on the shot coming from the point as a goaltender is just playing that shot. The tip ends up going right back the other way into the far corner from where Grubauer was leaning towards where the shot was going. And again, Borgen doing everything he can to try and prevent this from happening. It happens anyway, and the Stars have the 2-1 to one lead. Happily, though, it's a lead for the Stars that would not last very long at all, as just over two minutes later, the Kraken start their minute of madness here in the late part of the first period. And it starts with a play that honestly is just terribly defended by the Stars, as all five of them get caught puck watching in a battle down in the corner where Tanev and Donato are the two Kraken among the five Stars. Eventually, Tanev wins that battle out for Donato. Donato fires off a shot to the far side, where Justin Schultz is wide open with all sorts of time. And honestly, he had a couple of options here. He's got Daniel Sprong behind the net that he could pass it to for a tip in or I mean just wrapping it into the corner if he gets that pass off quick enough but instead he makes the correct decision I would say to just do it himself as he has all that time to pick his spot take his shot and just like Pavelski on the first goal fires it far side past the blocker of Ottinger and into the net to tie the game at two and again in a series where on paper it looks like it's going to be pretty low scoring to get this quick response goal is really important for the Kraken tying it up at two and Wait, what's this? The Kraken with a faceoff, they're right back in. Two on one, Bjorkstrand fires in, scores to give the Kraken the lead. 11 seconds after Schultz ties it, Bjorkstrand builds off of his incredible game seven, getting his third of the playoffs and third in two games to give the Kraken that three to two lead. And it has to be pointed out that in the preview, I mentioned the fact that the Kraken in the regular season were the second worst team at winning faceoffs and continued to be bad in round one. Meanwhile, the Stars were the league's best team at winning faceoffs over the course of the regular season, and then were the best team at winning faceoffs in round one. But the Kraken make this second goal in 11 seconds happen after winning the faceoff at center ice following the game-tying goal from Schultz. And then they're right back in, getting that quick pass through the neutral zone up to Bjorkstrand for the two-on-one rush. Bjorkstrand fires it off and... From a star's perspective, while maybe you'd like to see a save here from Ottinger, especially considering there isn't a pass on this two-on-one rush, and Bjorkstrand's shot that Ottinger is set up for is still coming from more towards the outside. In Ottinger's defense, while it was hard to see in real time, Bjorkstrand's shot does end up getting tipped off of the end of the stick of the defender right in front of him, so that may have thrown Ottinger off a bit, and even at that, it goes perfectly top corner right over that blocker side of Ottinger once again to give the Kraken that 3-2 to two lead. So it's true the Kraken may not win a ton of face-offs over the course of this series against the Stars and in fact in game one the Stars did get the better of them there winning 39 face-offs to just 28 one for the Kraken but they won that one off of the Schultz tying goal and they made the most of it getting right back down the ice 
And again, just 11 seconds between goals two and three for the Kraken, they took the lead off of that faceoff. And then, although the Kraken don't win the next faceoff after this Bjorkstrand goal, they do get quickly back into the offensive end and force a faceoff in Dallas's end of the ice, which, wouldn't you know it, they end up winning that one as well. It's Everly winning it out to Beneers. Beneers passing it along the blue line for Vince Dunn on the far side. Dunn from the corner, firing off the shot on net. And Everly, after having won the faceoff, has gotten up towards the net. He's able to tip it, and it's into the net to give the Kraken their third goal in 52 seconds. They take the 4-2 lead and getting two goals after one faceoffs, which is not something I think almost anybody saw coming. The Kraken have scored the sixth goal of this first period, which again is not something anyone saw coming. I mean, really, the only way this could have been more perfect with three Kraken goals in 52 seconds, so it's hard to ask for too much, is if it had happened from Borgen getting a shot tipped in by Cartier, with them being numbers 3 and 52. Either way, the Kraken have surged after the two Pavelski goals, both of those Pavelski goals giving the Stars the lead. The Kraken come right back and score three in less than a minute to take the 4-2 to two lead, which they would hold on to into the first intermission. Although, I suppose, even if it would have been fun for it to be Borg and Descartier just for the fun of how the numbers line up, it was probably nice to see this Beneers line, Beneers and Everly in particular, as well as Vince Dunn, all three of whom had kind of a quiet first series, get involved right away here in Game 1 of this series against the Stars. As if the Kraken want to complete a second upset in a row, they're going to need those three to really step up, at least until McCann can get back, if nothing else. And that's assuming McCann can get back. Anyway, so we go to the second period where, although we were coming in expecting this to be a lower scoring series, after six goals in the first, it seems like anything goes now, and especially with that first period being played pretty wide open and fast up and down the ice, this game might just keep going that way but it does kind of settle down into more what we expected coming in, as honestly, the second period, there's hardly anything to talk about. Beneers has a couple more opportunities to score himself off of actually very nice setups from Cartier, who played every shift in this game. In the three games ending the Avalanche series, they were going every other shift with him, either spelling him with Tanev or Donato, going up onto that line with Beneers and Eberly for every other shift for Cartier, but he played... Again, every shift, nobody double shifting in his spot. So played pretty well in this game, considering the moment being it in the second round and the fact that it's the first game he really played all of his opportunities. Aside from that, though, and three power plays over the course of this second period, two for the Kraken, one for the Stars, none of which end up scoring. Again, it's pretty uneventful and is much more what we expected coming in as we get to the third period with the Kraken still maintaining that 4-2 to two lead. And as we mentioned throughout the Avalanche series, when the Kraken go into the third with a lead, there's a very good chance they're going to come out of that third period also with the lead, or at least end up winning the game. However, although early on it did seem like that was going to be the case, as Beneers had a half at least wide open net with Ottinger out of position, he ends up putting that one off of the post that could have made it 5-2, to two, and after the fact, puts his stick on his head and looks to the sky, obviously upset with himself for missing what was an easy goal. He's going to score on that 9 out of 10 times, heck, probably 99 out of 100 times. Doesn't on this one, putting it off of the post and out, which ends up being pretty important because as we get farther on, the Kraken get another power play. They don't score on it. And then it's Joe Pavelski, who I don't know whether it was a horseshoe up his butt or a rabbit's foot in his pocket or rolling around in a field of four-leaf clovers between periods, but he just had the lucky stick in this game, and it's not that the way he scored goals was necessarily lucky, as boy does that guy have incredible hands-eye coordination, more so the setups just happening to work out so that he had those opportunities in the first place, as right after the Kraken failed to score on their third power play of the game, which they actually had some pretty dangerous chances in, but again, failed to score. Right back down the other way against the flow of play on a rush. There's a save made by Grubauer, and although he has been doing an incredible job throughout round one and then throughout this game two periods in, at limiting rebounds, really not letting that many rebounds up, and even when he does, controlling those rebounds pretty well, this one ends up bouncing off of his chest, and he can't quite get his glove to it. 
So it trickles out in front of the net and Pavelski just happens to be the first one to it, putting his skate sideways and his stick between them. And it goes off of one of those and into the back of the net to make this a one goal game. And unfortunately, that turns out to be enough for the Stars to build some momentum off of going into the back half of the third. And a couple minutes later, once again, it's Pavelski with a fortunate bounce to come towards him. This time, it's, I think it was Domi that fires a puck along the goal line from the corner with Larson right in front of him. In fact, it ends up bouncing off of Larson's stick up in the air right out in front of the net where Pavelski, once again, skating right in, is able to just kind of turn with his stick at his chest and deflect it with the end of his stick right into the top corner over the blocker of Grubauer, who again has absolutely no chance with this perfect deflection. A lucky bounce goes to Pavelski. He does the rest and the game is tied as he has scored four goals against the Kraken, who basically at this point are now tied four to four Kraken versus Pavelski. So if there was any question as to whether or not he would have an impact when he was able to come back, which it didn't seem clear that he was going to be able to get back for game one right up until pretty much game time or maybe a couple hours before. Well, I guess we have our answer. He makes a huge impact right away in game one. Fortunately for the Kraken, they're just lucky that nobody else was able to contribute as this does end up going to overtime tied at four. And I mean, look, as a Kraken fan, if you had known coming into this game based on the fact that the Kraken were coming off of again, just one day's rest, having played every other day throughout these playoffs so far, having just played a game seven, two days before this game against the Stars, well, the Stars have had a few days to rest, having won their series in six, plus Pavelski, although he was recovering from an injury, so it's not like he was resting, is coming in pretty fresh. You might feel good about the fact that the Kraken at least got this game to overtime if it wasn't for the fact that they blew a two goal lead in the third to get there. And now that it's in overtime again, because the stars have had that rest and the Kraken have been playing every other day and just put everything on the line to win that game seven against the avalanche. You'd have to think if one of these teams is going to get tired and make that mistake in overtime that ends up costing them, it'll probably end up being the Kraken. And sure enough, a few minutes in, they almost make that mistake as Grubauer has to come up with a couple of massive saves in tight one original and then another one off of the rebound off of a different stars player coming in he makes both of those saves and then manages to get the puck off to the side so the kraken can start going back the other way which that was really the culmination of a bunch of stars pressure at the start of this period so again when group Bauer makes these two big saves it feels like it could be a matter of time before eventually one ends up behind him but the kraken after those saves do seem to kind of get things together, turn momentum back the other way, and as the Kraken are able to get that momentum going their way into the offensive end, they take what is really just a shooting mentality at this point in this overtime period, creating chaos out in front of the Dallas net. It's Bjorkstrand who fires off a shot, that's blockered down by Ottinger, but right back out into Bjorkstrand's chest. It falls to the ice and he just isn't quite able to get it to settle for him, so he can't get that rebound shot off. Eventually, it gets up to the net where Ottinger is able to shove it aside out into the corner or towards the corner anyway. It ends up in the feet of Yanni Gord, who has star players all around him. Eventually, he's able to try and bounce it off of the sideboards up to the Kraken defense so they can start a cycle and maybe get another chance off on net. But the puck never even makes it to the boards as Gord's attempt to get it to the boards ends up going off of Dodonov's stick, bouncing right back into Gord's feet. He looks down at it, just whips around 180 and fires off the shot. And, and, well, we didn't know right away because unfortunately the camera had decided that the puck was going to the corner. So the goal isn't in shot when Gord fires off the shot towards the net. But Bjorkstrand has thrown his hands up in the air and sure enough, it went off the shoulder of Ottinger into the top of that and the Kraken have come away with the 5-4 OT winner from Yanni Gord taking game one and with a huge win after having blown that two goal lead in the third it would have been a huge momentum swing I think in this series had the Stars managed to come back and win this with those two goals in the third but the Kraken although hanging on might be Putting it a bit loosely, they're able to survive the early pressure in overtime and momentum from the Stars after having tied it to eventually create this opportunity for the game winner, and Gord is the one that puts it in. Now, yes, to be fair, since I was going on and on, at least during the stream, which if you joined for the stream, thank you very much, and 
did mention about how lucky at least the setup for the two Pavelski goals in the third was, even if what he did to actually finish those goals was actually pretty impressive, especially when it came to that floating hands-eye coordination tip on the fourth one. It's fair to mention that there is a good amount of luck going right back the other way when it comes to Gord getting that rebound for that whip around shot. Again, though, that's just what happens sometimes when you play a sport on ice where you whack around a frozen rubber disc. Eventually, some weird bounces are going to happen, and you just have to hope that if there is luck involved, it's at least somewhat even between the two teams. And while I might still say that the Stars got a little bit more of that in this game, it's fairly even, and the Kraken got it when it mattered most here in overtime. As for takeaways then here from a huge Game 1 win for the Kraken, well, I don't know if we're going to get a better example in these playoffs than how the Kraken have been able to find success scoring-wise, as the Kraken score all five of their goals from different players. Meanwhile, the Stars, well, it was all one player in Joe Pavelski. So once again, this Kraken lineup showing that, well, maybe they don't quite yet have the same top end of any of the other teams in the playoffs. They certainly, lines one through four, have the best depth probably in the NHL. Another big part of the reason that the Kraken end up winning here in game one, and something that I mentioned was going to be a key in this series in the series preview video that I managed to get out a few hours before game one started, was the volume of shots that the Kraken managed to get off on Ottinger, where in the three meetings these teams had in the regular season, the Kraken were held to less than 30 shots in two of them and just 31 shots in the third. Meanwhile, here in game one, even with some of them coming in overtime, the Kraken managed to get 44 shots off on Ottinger, and that is a big part of the reason they managed to get five of them past him. Including, as we just talked about, that game winner that came off of a series of shots, and a final one that was a pretty low percentage shot from Gord, but he just threw it at the net, and when you throw pucks at the net, sometimes good things are going to happen, so the more you can take those shots, the better. And finally, to limit it at just three takeaways, otherwise we would be here for way too long, the final big takeaway from this game for me was the physicality that the Kraken were able to play with, and especially the difference of the Kraken physical play versus that of the Stars, where, although as I've mentioned, hits are somewhat subjective, when it's as lopsided as it was in this game, 47 hits for the Kraken to just 19 for the Stars, that does tell a story, even if there is some subjectivity in there. Plus, at least to me anyway, it definitely showed up in the success that the Kraken were able to have on the forecheck and backcheck in this game, not only just along the boards, but also in the center of the ice, especially in the defensive end, really keeping things to the outside. Now, a couple of those things from the outside ended up in rebounds or deflections from Pavelski that ended up in the net, but at least the Kraken, for the most part, kept things to the outside and had a really strong game when it came to that physical, especially forward-checking mentality, something that, to the credit of the Avalanche, they did a pretty good job of limiting for the most part in that series in round one. And as we get to the Kraken three stars, that might as well be where we start with the king of forward-checking on this roster, that being Yanni Gord with the game winner in overtime. He's my first star of the game, and again, all up and down the ice, just being a pest throughout this game. The second star also on that line and a big part of the reason the Kraken are even in this series in the first place with how they were able to shut down the McKinnon line for the most part in the first series. They didn't have quite as obvious of a matchup as the stars tried to kind of spread out their guys throughout the first two or three lines and not make it quite as easy for the Kraken to just roll out that Gord line to shut down their best players. But that meant that they could make things happen in the offensive end where Bjorkstrand picks up a goal and an assist. Wait, no, sorry. It looks like they unfortunately took Bjorkstrand's assist on the game-winning goal for Gord away. That now an unassisted goal for Gord. But either way, Bjorkstrand still picks up that goal on the rush 11 seconds after Schultz's goal. And either way, he had a fantastic game all up and down the ice, even outside of the goal he scored. So those two are my first and second star. And then the third star, again, this is because of the depth the Kraken have, it's so hard to pick stars in games like this where all four lines had fantastic parts of this game. Obviously, Donato had that great play between five stars players along with Tanev to set up Schultz for that goal that tied it at two. And then there's Cartier, who I already mentioned, having a great game in his first real full game, getting every shift with Beneers and Everly. Speaking of which, Beneers had a great game and 
if he had buried that one to make it five to two, I probably would have given him the third star. Instead, I'm going to give it to his line mate in Jordan Everly, who does get a goal and assist with two points. And again, good to see that line finally getting some scoring going. Obviously, somewhat hampered by the fact that their third guy was a mixture of Cartier and either Tanev or Donato. So just a, not a ton of consistency with McCann missing, but they do finally get on the board and start to make a difference here. So hopefully they can keep that going later on in the series as the Kraken are going to need that line in particular to really step up, especially while McCann's out. Though, of course, again, saying they need to step up might be a bit overselling it as the Kraken can just score up and down this lineup. And even if that line isn't going, then like we saw in series one, maybe it'll be the line of Wemberg, Geeky, and Schwartz that steps up. Either way, the Kraken don't rely on just two or three players, and that showed here in this game just like it did in Series 1. With that having been said, it's already getting late, obviously, with this recording having had to start late from the overtime in this game, and running late past that for the end of the stream, which again, if you joined, thank you very much, and we will be streaming again for Game 2 on Thursday, which the Kraken will try to win their first two games on the road and take that suffocating 2 to nothing lead home with them and... I mean, it's a long shot still, but a chance to sweep then. Probably getting way too ahead of ourselves there. This is still a series that probably goes to six or seven. Whatever the case, let me know what you think of this game one win, who your three stars would be, and what you like to see from the Kraken in this game. And hoping that Pavelski has gotten all of his scoring out of the way after game one, or at least that when, or hopefully if McCann comes back, maybe he can answer right back with a similar performance. Regardless, that's enough rambling for me. So if you have made it to this point, thank you very much for joining. If you did like or enjoy this video, there are buttons for that kind of stuff down below to help support the channel. So I'd appreciate you using them. Until next time, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. God bless and go Kraken!